So for this question, we're going to try and find the transfer function g over all. And that's equal to the output of the whole diagram, which is c, divided by the input, uh, which is r. So we're going to write ourselves an equation that describes uh, what's going as we move from left to right across the diagram. And then we should be able to rearrange that algebra to get c on r. So starting at the left hand side here, we've got r. And if we want to jump over this summing junction and work out the signal at this point, uh, we need to multiply the signal by uh, the block. So the signal at this point is just going to be r times g1. So at this point, it now goes into a summing junction, and we can see that we need to take the positive of that signal. So it's going to be positive rg1. And we can see that we've got a second input to this summing junction, which is going to be negative. So I can mark that in. But it's going to take us a little bit of effort to work out exactly what the signal is at this point. So if we trace it back, it kind of starts out here. And we have our signal being C. If we want to go backwards across this block, usually when we go forwards, we multiply the signal by what's inside our block. That will give us the output. If we're going backwards though, we need to do the opposite, which means that we need to divide. So that means that the signal at this point in our system is going to be C divided by G4. Alright, so we still need to keep going because um, we're trying to get to this point here. Now this, this is the signal all across this part. So this time though, if we go down this branch, we're going forward along our arrow. So if we're going forward, that means we're back to multiplying in order to pass across this block. So the signal on this side is going to be what we have, which is C on G4. And now it needs to be multiplied by what's inside the block, which is G5. So that's what's going in uh, to the summing junction. So that's what needs to be negative. So we're going to have C, G5, divided by G4. So that's what's now here. Okay, we've got R G1 minus C G5 on G4 as the signal at this point. So we now need to jump across our diagram again, um, across this G2. So we're going again in the direction of the arrows, which means that we just need to multiply our signal um, by the transfer function inside the block. So that brings us to here. So all of this is the signal at this point. We now need to jump again. So if we need to do that, that means multiplying by the transfer function inside our block, which brings us back to this point. So we know that this is equal to this, but we can also keep going because we want G4 in our diagram. So in order to pass again, we're going forwards across the arrow. We need to multiply our signal by that uh, transfer function. And it means that in the end, we're on this side of the diagram. So all of this is equal to C, the signal at the output. So all that remains now is rearranging our equation to get it to read as C divided by R. So what I can do is expand out the bracket um, and put these G2, G3, G4s in. It's meant to be the number four. All right, so what I'm going to find is that I'm going to get some cancelling here. So those are going to cancel out. Um, I'm going to put this onto the other side of the equation so that I have everything with um, C's on one side, everything without on the other. Okay, I'm now going to factorize these. So it's going to be C outside of 1 plus G2, G3. Oh gosh, 3. <laughs> this still stays the same. And now I should be able to get my transfer function. So C divided by R, this comes down, is equal to this divided by this. So that's equal to G over all. So that's all there is um, for that question. And I'll see you in another video.